Okay, so I read Benjamin Percy's essay on not looking back. Don't look back is what it's called. And I felt pretty chastised in this. I feel like that's probably something that I do a lot. Um, having too much backstory, having too much background. And he gave forth some really good points of why not to. So, um, I'm just going to go through a few of those points in the story of Young Goodman Brown. And how that relates to... Um, what Percy is talking about and how we need to apply that more in our own writing. Um, so one of the things that Percy talked about was, um, there's a quote in there that says, a reader intuits the history of a character by observing them acting in the present. And young Goodman Brown, the protagonist in young Goodman Brown, does that a lot. He is very, you can tell through just descriptions throughout, he's, um, He's very hesitant to go into the forest. He's hesitant to do whatever he's going to do um, with this ceremony. He's very trusting of the people in the town, of the minister, of Goody Cloyce, of Deacon Gookin, and things like that. Um, and with Faith, you can tell he's a good husband. He loves her and he wants to be there for her. And you can see these things. Um, let's see. Even just in the very introduction of the story, as he's saying goodbye to Faith as he heads to the forest, um, how much he loves her and how he's so sad about leaving her and he feels guilty already. And so even just those simple details throughout the story tell a lot about who he is and it, it didn't need to like go into his past about when he was a kid and he grew up in a faithful family who is religious and all that stuff um you could gather all of that because of just the simple details throughout um something else that percy talked about was that <laughs> there's a lot of things that can offend the reader if we if we go into too much detail about the backstory because that basically is calling them dumb like they can't figure it out on their own and I, I mean, I guess I kind of feel like that when I'm reading stories and I feel like the author is going too much in, in depth about it. And uh, Young Goodman Brown, I feel like, is really great at, like, hinting at things that happened or even, like, saying, oh, hey, this happened without going into the full story of it. We can just infer what happened and we can infer who those people are and what their characters were. Um, and part of that is even as towards the beginning as young Goodman Brown is walking with his fellow traveler and he talks about how I need to turn back like my father and my family would never do this we're religious we're good and then his fellow traveler is like no like I helped your gr I helped your father lash a Qu Quaker woman and I helped your grandfather kill an Indian village and things like that and it doesn't go into the story, it doesn't flash back like, there was this one time that we slaughtered a whole Indian village and go into all the gory details of that. They simply have to say a, a word or two and we understand like, oh, maybe there's something that we don't know. Um, so just simple details like that can tell the reader that there's something behind the scenes, but we don't have to go into too much detail for them to understand what the story really is and what's at stake here. Um, another thing is that um, we can hint at the past to reveal more about the present and the character within the sentences. Um, one really good example of this is after they meet Goody Cloyce in the forest. And there's a sentence that says, That old woman taught me my catechism, said the young man, and there was a world of meaning in this simple comment. So even the story points out, hey, there's a lot of meaning behind that. There's a lot more to to just this old woman walking in the forest. Like, this woman is supposed to be a good, faithful, pious woman, and all of a sudden she's going to meet the devil. And so just by saying that old woman taught me my catechism says so much about what young Goodman Brown is dealing with here. Um, another one at the very end talks about the figure who's in charge of the meeting. It describes him as being despairingly awful, basically. And 
um, acting as if his once angelic nature could yet mourn for our miserable race. And so by saying his once angelic nature, we can infer, oh, this is Satan. He fell from heaven. He fell from godliness. And now he is a fallen angel. So th there are things like that that can add so much to the story, but we don't have to point out exactly like what is going on to to let the reader infer for themselves. Um, another thing that was pointed out was how if we make our characters just focus so much on the past, if we just have too many flashbacks, if we just tell too much backstory, then the character and the story is stagnant. And so, like young Goodman Brown, he thinks a lot of the past. He thinks a lot of these people that he's passing in the forest. He thinks about how Goody Cloyce taught him his catechism and how he looks so much up to the minister and Deacon Gook and how, and how they raised him and um, helped him become the man who he was. He thinks a lot about that and it adds to the story, but he's not so much focused on the past as he is in the present and how those past experiences are affecting so much of what he's feeling right now and it completely always stays in the present it stays with him walking on this path in the forest and all that he's thinking about just adds to his fear and the pressure that he's feeling right now um but it doesn't have to go back in time to make all of that clear um and then just a couple more things the very end it it talks about um, young Goodman Brown the rest of his life. It talks about him up until he dies and how basically his whole life was gloomy after this experience and um, something that Percy talked about in his story or in his essay was that if we are writing a story about one point in time and we just find ourselves writing so much about the past maybe we should make the past the present. Maybe we should just write about that story that we keep flashing back to. Maybe that should be right now instead of a flashback. And I feel like what if Nathaniel Hawthorne was trying to write the story about this guy who he was an old man and he was so dark and gloomy and it all led back to this one time and he flashed back to this whole story and it was just a flashback. It wouldn't have as much power. It wouldn't have as much, um, as much as much power <laughs> that's that's the word I can think of it wouldn't have as much power um behind it it wouldn't have as much meaning and we wouldn't get the same feelings out of it it wouldn't mean as much because it's not happening right now there's not that ticking clock right now there's not this that suspense and that's what we need in a story um without it what is the story I mean it, like I said before, it's stagnant. It The characters don't mean much. Um, and then just one last thing. <laughs> Percy talked about how brilliant writers are able to violate this, but as we're learning, which we still are, even at the end of this class, um, we're going to be learning for a long time. And so really a good rule is to just try not to have any backstory at all unless it really, really works. Um, and a couple short stories that I found that have done this are Lydia Fitzpatrick's Safety. There are so many characters in that, and some of them you only meet for like a sentence or two, but you learn so much about the kids or the teachers or whoever it is in those sentences. You find out more about their families and their backstory and why they're feeling what they feel. So that's a... Uh, and it doesn't go back in time. So that's a really great um, example of this and another one I really love is The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkin, Perkin Gilman and that one is awesome because it's completely written in the present it's actually about like her writings and she tells about how she got to where she was but it, it's not written like in past tense like it kind of is she just like flashes back like oh yeah we came here but this and this and this this is what what's happening to me now and it tells it in real time and that just makes it so much more powerful because you go on the journey with her. You don't just see her as she is now and then like, oh, this happened a couple weeks ago. You're experiencing it with her as she's experiencing it. And that just, it makes the whole thing more powerful. And so I think Young Goodman Brown is a wonderful example of not looking back and focusing on um, what's most important in the story, which is the present. Um, the present is what makes the story. And 
So yeah, let's all try to do that a little more.